Have you ever asked God for a miracle? Have you wondered why none has come to you? You're actually wrong. Miracles happen to you daily. When you sleep and wake up while someone else sleeps but does not wake up, that's a miracle. But there's a miracle you can witness any time. And maybe you have, but you've not realized it. It's the greatest of all miracles, which happens each day in places very close to you. And you may have been missing it. Hello, I'm Nenye Andy, and this is Fide's Catholic Point, dedicated to Mother Mary, to her son, Fidelis Gabriel, for all he taught us and to her daughter Charlotte, who is coming into the faith. Here, in full dependence on the Holy Church, we seek to better know, live, and defend our faith. And today we're going to talk about the miracle that happens at Holy Mass. The Holy Mass is the central act of faith and the highest form of worship. It is the perfect sacrifice of Jesus Christ, which he made on the cross in payment for our sins. And he does the same on our altars every day. It's the most important prayer of the church. This is because it is the same as the sacrifice the Lord made on the cross, though in an invisible and unbloody manner. The mass is holy because Christ, who himself is all holy, acts through his priest. Christ's sacrifice put an end to all animal sacrifices and he became the permanent offering which we give to God at every holy mass. That is the new covenant. Many people wonder why we say the holy mass. The truth is that no book can record all the wonders of the mass. Only in heaven we will realize its full merits. The early fathers of the church have told us of the numerous graces we receive at Holy Mass. And we're going to put links to this below this video. Christ himself asked that we repeat and keep up this in memory of him. So at Holy Mass, we gather as a family, eat and pray together and give ourselves to God, who also comes to give himself to us. The Mass has the same purpose as Christ's death on the cross, to give the greatest glory to God and to attain atone for our sins. So if we participate attentively at Mass, our venial sins are forgiven, and nothing else gives God greater glory than to attend the Holy Mass in a state of grace. We know that during Mass, we praise God with thousands of angels and saints from heaven, who, though invisible to us at Mass, are truly present. We also offer God the sacrifice of his Son for the repose of the departed souls in order to hasten their release from purgatory. So the three arms of the church, on earth, in heaven, and in purgatory, also relate at Mass. Jesus talks to us through the priest each time we come to Mass. He leaves us messages which encourage us to live better and to bear one another's burdens. The center of the celebration is a consecration when the Lord is lifted up on the cross in the arms of the priest. But all other parts of the Holy Mass lead to this time. So we start with the celebration with the introductory rites. This initial time is mainly to prepare and cleanse ourselves to receive the miracle of the consecration. When we come in at mass after the sign of the cross, which reminds us of the three persons in one God, the Holy Trinity, and also reminds us of the cross of Christ, the priest gives us a few moments of silence to think about our lives and ask God for pardon. We confess our sinfulness to one another by saying, I confess to Almighty God. And God in his priest forgives our venial sins. We'll talk about sins and types of sins in another video. 
Unfortunately, many Christians miss this very important beginning in our mass because they come late. What follows is our song of praise to God. And since the angels are there, we use the same words that the angels used to praise the Lord at Christmas when he was born. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. The second part of the Mass is the Liturgy of the Word, where we listen to two or three readings from different parts of the Bible. These readings will all have a connected message for us, which the priest will tell us in his sermon or homily after the readings. We listen to stories of Jesus while he was on earth and also to earlier believers and their stories. After God's message, we declare our faith and trust in our God by reciting the creed, I believe in God. The creed summarizes and reminds us of all that we believe. While still waiting for the Lord, we unite to pray for all our needs and the needs of all men in the prayer of the faithful. Then comes the most important part of the celebration. We have asked for pardon of our sins, listened to God's word and declared our faith in him. So we now get ready for the liturgy of the Eucharist. We are ready to receive the Lord. First, we present ourselves and our gifts to God giving him generously from what he has blessed us with. In this way, we get his blessings, help to maintain the Holy Church and our beloved priests, and also provide support to the church's mission of spreading God's love to everyone. The priest prepares the bread and wine to be consecrated and offers them along with our own gifts and his. As we are already joined by angels and saints, we sing the heavenly song, which is in Revelations in the Bible, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, and we await the Lamb of God. The kiss of peace, which we give to one another during Mass at this time, shows fellowship, forgiveness, and unity. The ringing of the bell tells us that the most important part of the celebration has come and we kneel to worship the Lord who comes through the sacred words of the priest to shed his blood for us. Take this and eat. This is my body given for you. Take this and drink. This is my blood for the forgiveness of sins. We listen to him once more. With eyes of faith, we see him at the Last Supper again. We see him lifted up on the cross, bleeding for us. We believe in transubstantiation, that the substance of the bread and wine have changed completely to the sacred body and most precious blood of Jesus. Jesus is truly present among us. Heaven has mixed with earth. And that is the greatest miracle ever. We believe it because Jesus said it and we know it's true. So in reverence and awe, we come out to receive him who died for us. He had said that if we do not eat his flesh and drink his blood, we will have no life in us. Christ has died for us and we have him in us where we can speak, praise, and thank him personally within us. The celebration then ends with the concluding rites, where we receive two things. First, God's blessings through his priest, and then a reminder of our part in the mission of the church, to spread God's love to everyone. So the Lord sends us out, now better prepared to do his will because we have received him and we have fellowship with him and with one another. So we, say, we are sent out to go and show in our words and in our actions the love of God that we have seen and received at Holy Mass.
So the priest says, the mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. The Holy Mass is much more than a miracle. It is the miracle of miracles. It is the feast of feasts. It is a share in Jesus' cross. And it is a glimpse of heaven. Let us always participate fully at each Holy Mass and find time to attend even during weekdays. Because the more we attend, the more we gain from the body and blood of Christ. And while at Holy Mass, may we all realize that we are privileged to be present at the greatest event happening in the entire world at that particular time.